ASTM C172 is the standard practice for sampling freshly mixed concrete. This practice covers standard procedures for sampling from concrete production and transportation units, including stationary mixers, paving mixers, truck mixers, agitating and non-agitating equipment used to transport centrally mixed concrete, as well as continuous mixing equipment, as described in ASTM C685. This practice also covers the procedures to be used for preparing a sample of concrete for further testing, where it may be necessary to remove the aggregate larger than a designated size. The removal of larger aggregate is preferably accomplished by wet sieving. The intention of proper sampling is to ensure uniform samples of freshly mixed concrete from different containers used in the production and or transportation of concrete. This presentation does not suggest to address the safety concerns associated with this procedure. It is the responsibility of the viewer of this presentation to follow all safety procedures, rules, and standards established by private companies, government agencies, and construction site supervisors. This presentation uses both inch-pound units as well as SI units. These units shall be regarded as separate. In other words, the value of one unit shall not be considered the exact equivalent of the other. Therefore, the units shall not be considered interchangeable. Any conflating of the two systems may result in non-compliance of this standard. So, let's start with the time constraints. The maximum allowable time between obtaining the first and final portion of the composite sample is 15 minutes. We want to transport the samples to the location where the fresh concrete tests are to be performed, or where test specimens are to be fabricated. The sample or samples shall be combined and remixed with a shovel. The recombining of the sample shall be the minimum amount necessary to ensure uniformity but also to remain in compliance with the initial start time of fresh concrete tests. As an example, tests for slump, temperature, and air content must begin within five minutes after obtaining the final portion of the composite sample. And the molding of specimens for strength test must begin within 15 minutes after obtaining the composite sample. The sample should be obtained and used expeditiously. However, of equal importance is the sample must be protected from the sun, wind, or any other source of rapid evaporation and from all sources of contamination. Protecting the sample can be easily accomplished by placing a plastic sheet over the sample. If strength specimens are to be made, the sample size must be at least 1 cubic foot, or 28 liters. Samples smaller than 1 cubic foot, or 28 liters, are permissible for routine tests, such as temperature, slump, and air content. The overall size of the sample shall be dictated by the maximum size of the aggregate. So now, let's review specific sampling procedures for various types of production and transportation units. However, please note, the procedure used in sampling should assist in obtaining samples that are representative of the true nature and conditions of the concrete being sampled. Sampling is normally performed as the concrete is delivered from the mixer. However, specific adjustments may be required depending upon the project site. As an example, Samples may have to be obtained at the discharge of a concrete pump or other mobile units. Now, on to the mixers. For most mixer types, we'll obtain the sample by passing a receptacle completely through the discharge stream or by completely diverting the discharge into a sample container. If discharge of the concrete is too rapid to divert the complete discharge stream, Discharge the concrete into a container or transportation unit sufficiently large enough to accommodate the entire batch, and then accomplish the sampling in the same manner as given previously. Take care not to restrict the flow of concrete from the mixer, container, 
or transportation unit so as to cause segregation. These requirements apply to both tilting and non-tilting mixers. And now, let's discuss specific mixer types. And let's start with paving mixers. Sample the concrete after the contents of the paving mixer have been discharged. Obtain samples from at least five different portions of the pile and combine them into one composite sample for test purposes. Avoid contamination with subgrade material or prolonged contact with an absorptive subgrade. Next up, revolving drum truck mixers. Sample the concrete by collecting two or more portions of the concrete, taken at regularly spaced intervals during the discharge of the middle portion of the batch. These samples must be obtained within the 15-minute time frame previously discussed. Sample portions must be taken at two or more regularly spaced intervals. Combine the samples into one composite sample for testing purposes. Do not obtain portions of the composite sample from the first or last part of the batch. Generally, samples should not be taken before 10% or after 90% of the batch has been discharged. Regulate the rate of discharge of the batch by the rate of revolution of the drum and not by the size of the gate opening. In any case, do not obtain samples until after all of the water and any admixtures have been added to the mixer. Obtain the sample by passing a receptacle completely through the discharge stream or by completely diverting the discharge into the sample container. Next up, continuous mixers. Sample the concrete after the discharge of at least 5 cubic feet or 140 liters of concrete following all mixture proportioning adjustments. Sample the concrete at the frequency specified by collecting two or more portions taken at regularly spaced intervals during discharge of the concrete. The portions must be obtained within the 15 minutes previously discussed. Combine the portions into one composite sample for test purposes. Do not obtain portions of the composite sample from the first or last portion of the batch. Generally, samples should not be taken before 10% or after 90% of the batch has been discharged. Obtain the sample by passing the receptacle completely through the discharge stream or by completely diverting the discharge into a sample container. After obtaining the composite sample, wait a minimum of 2 minutes and a maximum of 5 minutes before beginning tests. The waiting period prior to commencing the testing is needed because the mixed water is input only seconds before discharge from the continuous mixer. Next, open top mixers. When sampling from open top mixers, non-agitating, agitating, or other types of open top containers, refer to the procedures of stationary mixers, paving mixers, and revolving drum mixers, and select whichever method is most applicable to the conditions. A couple of final comments about sampling before moving on to wet sieving. Note that for revolving drum truck mixers, stationary mixers, and continuous mixers, the procedures are similar. We do not obtain the sample from the beginning of the batch or the end of the batch, but the middle of the batch. In general, we do not want to get any portion of the sample before 10% of the batch has been discharged or after 90% of the batch has been discharged. We want to get at least two portions of concrete at regularly spaced intervals. We repeatedly pass our sampling receptacle through the entire discharge stream, or completely divert the stream, and our sample must be obtained within 15 minutes. Since open top mixers do not have a standard procedure, but instead a procedure is selected based upon conditions, the only type of mixer that is sampled differently from the others is the paving mixer. Note that the sample is not taken until after discharge. Not two, but five portions must be obtained, and no specific time limit is discussed. Hopefully, this information will help you distinguish between the various sampling procedures.
So now, let's discuss wet sieving. Wet sieving is the process of removing aggregate larger than a designated size from the fresh concrete by sieving it over a designated sieve size. To perform this procedure, we will need some equipment. Some of the equipment required to perform this procedure include the sieve itself, which must have the appropriate designated opening size, a receptacle large enough to accommodate the procedure with a non-absorbent surface. Also, some hand tools will be required, such as a shovel, hand scoop, plastering trowel, and rubber gloves. After sampling the concrete, pass the concrete over the designated sieve and remove and discard the aggregate retained. This should be done before remixing. Shake or vibrate the sieve by hand or mechanical means until no undersized material remains on the sieve. If there is mortar adhering to the aggregate retained on the sieve, do not wipe the aggregate clean before discarding. Place only enough concrete on the sieve at any one time so that after sieving, the thickness of the layer of retained aggregate is not more than one particle thick. The concrete which passes the sieve shall fall into a batch pan of suitable size which has been dampened before use or onto a clean, moist, non-absorbent surface. Scrape any mortar adhering to the sides of the wet sieving equipment into the batch. After removing the larger aggregate particles by wet sieving, remix the batch with a shovel, the minimum amount necessary to ensure uniformity, and proceed to testing immediately. If density calculations are necessary for yield computations, the density test must be done before the wet sieving process. Now that we have discussed the various sampling procedures, let's go through a performance review. Many certification programs will give this portion of the exam orally, so it's best to understand the various steps of all mixer types. But for our example here, we will be using a laboratory size revolving drum mixer. Before obtaining our sample, we want to ensure that all admixtures and water have been added to the concrete. Take the sample. We now want to dampen the interior of our sample container. We do not want it dripping wet, but damp. We'll now pass our sample container under the discharge stream. This can also be accomplished by completely diverting the discharge stream. We can now transport the sample to the location of testing and recombine the concrete mix. Remember, do not exceed 15 minutes between the first and final portion of obtaining the sample. If fabricating test specimens, the minimum size must be one cubic foot or 28 liters. The sample must be protected from wind, sun, contamination, or any form of rapid evaporation. Tests such as slump, air content, and temperature must begin within five minutes after obtaining the samples. When strength specimens are to be made, the fabrication of those specimens must begin within 15 minutes after obtaining the composite sample. And this concludes ASTM C172, Standard Practice for Sampling Freshly Mixed Concrete.